Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of A Slant Eyed View with Two Sides of Cauliflower. Um, first, let me go over uh, the happenings over at Rachi Modern and Lumpany, the big fights of the past week. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, America. Fuck yeah. Um, but yeah, first let's go into the biggest fight of the week. Um, I talked about it a little bit last week. It was a big rematch. Litwada sit Hakul and not to keep Tor Morsi. Uh, Litwada got him again. Finished him again. Um, thus cementing, I believe, cementing him as the man at that particular weight class throughout Thailand. Um, this time he finished him with leg kicks. Not sure what it was. Um, on Nantaki that gave out on him, but there was one particular leg kick he caught him with and Litwood and knew it and went after it and kept chopping that same leg at the same place until they had to call it. Um, the co-main to that was a really good fight. Um, well, I shouldn't say it was a really good fight. A very exciting fight to watch. With Soy Kim Sit Sor Tor Tile. Hope I got that right. Um, versus now upon Lupakrit. And um, Suikian put on a, a clinic on clinch control and offense. Um, I, I am. I want to be careful with how I word this. I don't know that I've ever seen such one-sidedness with the elbows um, in a fight in Bangkok and in. in my experience watching from the computer screen and live in person, uh, it looked the fight up. Um, it, if, if you follow anything more Thai, it should have popped up on your feeds. At some point, you'll see Nama Pond full of blood. <laughs> that's your clue. That's that's the one. Um, he, he he beat Nama Pond via uh, left elbow, uh, horizontal straight you know, but um, he had he put him down earlier with an up elbow. He really was able to put so many different up elbow, down elbow, diagonal, horizontal, everything but the fancy stuff. No spins, no um, yak nang baduk, <laughs> shovel elbow. Um, but yeah, that was the, the big event at Lumpany. Um, there were some other, there's always other fights. Um, real quick for those that don't know, um, Monday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Lumpany Stadium, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday, Rochmaderm. I might be wrong. One of those, I might be wrong on the Monday. Racha might get Monday, not Lumpany. Not positive. No, Lumpany gets Monday. Yeah. Anyhow, one of the two puts on a show every night of the week. Um, and they don't overrun each other. One is open, one is closed. Um, also, big news in Thailand. Um, this dude, I know, doesn't remember me, maybe except for in a hateful, spiteful way. But uh, you just sit, you just sit, sit your tongue. I didn't know what his first name is, and I hope I didn't butcher that. Got a second round KO win at Max Stadium this past week. Um, I wasn't sure who it was when I first saw the poster, and then I saw some pictures. Like, oh, I know exactly who that guy is. Um, and he's one of the hardest working dudes at that gym. Um, He's much younger than I thought he was. Uh, when I first saw him, I thought maybe he was almost my age, but no, he's, he's in his 20s or something like that. So, Anyway, congratulations to him. Um, always um, favor the fighter that I've actually um, spent time sweating in the same building with. <laughs> so, again, congratulations to him. Um, real quick, another thing that happened at Racha, there wasn't necessarily... Um, Mm, sorry, it wasn't necessarily big marquee fights during the week at Racha, but there were some nice, nice knockouts. One that didn't make knockout of the week, Chawarit Kiet Chayut. Kiet Chayut 
think that's right. Uh, knocked out Dodo Luke Cockrock. Luke Cockrock. Uh, via Hookside Left Hook KO. That child were with young, both these were kids. And when I say kids, definitely in their teens. I don't know if they were uh, legal American driving age or not. But um, definitely people, names to watch in the future. But Chavo Reed especially is a name to watch in the future, I would have to say. Um, that did not get KO'd week. I'll get on to that in a little bit here in a second. I want to give a special shout out to Yod Payak Sorjor Luke Muangnan. This dude, um, real early this morning, Sunday afternoon, Thailand, Bangkok time, TV7, got two of his front teeth knocked out of his mouth in the second round of a five-round fight, and he went to the bell. God damn, that is a tough M and F. -er. And um, big salute to that fella. Um, in a losing cause, nonetheless. But god damn, dude, you lose two teeth in the second round, you still do three more. Very few people in this world have that makeup inside of them. <laughs> I don't think I'm one of them, but I applaud those that are. Um, Knockouts of the week. Rox Modern, knockout of the week. Not Chawa Rit, actual uh, fellow foreigner. <laughs> uh, Kevin T. Dead, Gal Sip Gal, 99, Jim. Got uh, a liver KO over Sabmani Any Muay Thai Jim. It was a left knee to the liver. It was brutal as uh, the textbook delayed reaction that um, I think real pugilist fans i.e. people that don't just love watching it but also participate as much as they can such as myself um, nothing beats a body shot KO especially when it's with the left side when you know you got them on the right side of their body you know either with your left hand knee or leg into their right side of their their their, their squishies <laughs> there's Something special about that delayed reaction you get, because there's there's always kind of a look in despair when that reaction finally hits, like when they realize that they're shutting down. So, <laughs> it's a terrible feeling, because I I I've, I've been on both sides of it. Um, Lumpany KO week. I decided to go with Sula Kim just because I'm partial to the elbows. I debated back and forth because Litwa's KO is um, in many ways more amazing because it was a top of the food chain opponent and he beat him with a method that usually doesn't win on the top levels. Okay, because all those guys' legs are so hard, it's hard to, to, to finish them with just leg kicks. I mean, it happens from time to time. And um, I, I, I suspect that usually some other nagging injury they went in with that gets beyond nagging with the right kick. That's my suspicion. I don't know for sure. Um, and then also I have to mention this fellow named Watchalurm. Watchalurm had one of the prettiest up elbow KOs against this fellow named Bang Plinoy at, at this new place called the Blue Arena. Um, it was... I favored a soak. <laughs> Anyhow, that's that's all for that stuff. Real quickly, um, tonight, UFC in uh, Missouri. I forget, I'm, I'm guessing St. Louis. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, quite honestly, since my first trip in Thailand back in February, and then even more reinforced in my second trip during September, October. MMA for me as a viewer, consumer, is is merely a stopgap until I can watch Muay Thai on the regular. You know, um, I still like MMA, but it's definitely got, it's, 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 it's Muay Thai, then MMA, and then, um, 
K1 European rules kickboxing. Then it would go submission grappling competition, whether it be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or what have you. But when the objective is, say, I quit, <laughs> then comes that. Then would be regular boxing. And then after that would be um, the more specialized martial arts that don't get nearly enough airtime, which would be um, straight up Jiu Jitsu competition, straight up Sambo, straight up Judo, straight up. Uh, uh, Greco and freestyle wrestling, those things, they, they never get enough airtime. But yeah, they, they would be on my list of things I like watching. But again, at the top, tippy top, is Muay Thai, and then right below that is MMA. So anyhow, I'm going to be watching tonight because Du Ho Choi, the Korean Superboy, is fighting in the main event against Jeremy Stevens, Little Heaton. And that, to me, is a fight of interest. I will definitely have my eyes on it. Um, other than that, Nothing else is really happening, especially since Uriah Hall had to pull out for, for health concerns. I haven't looked into it, but I, it doesn't sound good. Um, had to pull out from Vitor Belfort's um, supposed retirement fight, which kind of stinks for Vitor, but considering the type of career he's had, it's almost fitting that the fight that he's supposed to retire with gets pushed. <laughs> so he's going to have to reschedule his retirement fight. You know, that that's almost seems somewhat fitting for the legendary don't get me wrong career that that man has had but it's 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 had so many that it only figures that that this would happen to him you know no offense again um other than that there's nothing on this card that's grabbing me at all um but again the main event is definitely worth watching i am favoring the young gun although jeremy stevens is no freaking joke and I know Du Hoi Choi is very confident in his striking abilities, but Jeremy Stevens is one of the rare people in that um, weight class that has one strike KO power. Mm, excuse me. So we'll see how it plays out. Although someone maybe argue that Troy also has that one strike KO power. We'll see how it plays out. I don't like. I don't like. I don't like his chances if he decides to just go in the pocket and brawl it out with him. He's going to have to be. Um, very, very technical to pull out the win. And on that note, I'll see you guys next week.